My first exposure to an urban farm was eating fresh tomatoes and cucumbers with salt from my grandparents' backyard in Westport. Today, urban farms of all sizes are popping up all across Charm City. Denzel Mitchell, founder of Five Seeds Farm, shares his love of family, food, and community from Bel Air Edison. It is a hot summer day in Northeast Baltimore, and we are here with urban farmer extraordinaire Denzel Mitchell. How are you, Denzel? I'm doing great. We are at the what? Five Bye. Seeds Farm. Absolutely. Where in the world did you get this name from? I already know because I, I met the Five Seeds, but why don't you tell everybody else where you got the name from? Uh, so the Five Seeds are my children. What are their our names? Um, Jassi, Nekue Amut, Monsadine, Osceola, and Amon. And they're already food snobs because their dad they are food is an urban farmer. Uh -huh. But this is all family and chef, and, and chef right? Mm -hmm. So this is a family affair, right? Yeah. Why did you come to Baltimore? You're, are you from Baltimore? I'm not. You're I'm not. from Oklahoma. You're from Oklahoma? Yeah. So what brought you to Baltimore? My wife brought me to the East Coast. Okay. She's from D.C. And then housing prices brought us to Baltimore. You came to this neighborhood. What, what attracted mm -hmm. you to Northeast Baltimore? This kind of rural feel it does to this feel particular, rural. yeah. This particular block feels nice and rural. It really does. We, we actually took a walk and, and we were like, this kind of feels like a rural area, right? In a plot minimum mm -hmm. in the city. So then you found your home and then you saw this plot of land and then you came up with the idea of the farm. So where did that come from? Is farming in your blood? Is it in the family? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, so I'm originally from Oklahoma. Right. Um, I, I spent a lot of time on a farm growing up. My, my, uh, my grandmother grew up on a 1600 acre farm wow. in Henrietta, Oklahoma. Okay. And so growing up, we, we would travel to it all the time, go and spend time there, um, go and harvest. When they did the pigs, we would go. When they harvested pecans, we would go. Um, in, in the summer, we would go. We'd always go there. Uh, it's real nostalgic during this time because we would always go for Fourth of July uh. and spend spend a lot of time. And I thought I hated it. You know, my parents' garden, my grandparents' garden on both sides. My aunts and uncles, they all had gardens, and that's what we had to do. And I thought I hated it, but as I got older, kind of came back to it. So we moved here. Um, I saw this place and it was just, you know, just a vacant lot. Okay. You know, just grass growing on it. The city would come and cut four times a, a summer or whatever. And, um, and then I was growing food over at one of the uh, city farms, um, one of the city farm sites in uh, Clifton Park. And uh, just decided to kind of expand out. So I learned about the Adopt-A-Lot program through the city. Okay. And adopted this lot and, and I started working on it. So originally the idea was to have a community managed open space, mm -hmm. you know, and have have uh, gardens, garden plots that everybody could could uh, grow food on. But what I learned is that not everybody wants to grow food. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. So so I decided to grow food for for people. But they want to eat. They do want to eat. And they like local food, <laughs> so you, you fit that niche, right? Right. Exactly. Okay. So so that's kind of how I started. I'm looking at this open space and right. this awesome community in Northeast Baltimore, and I'm looking at a peach tree. Right. Right. I'm already like you know, kind of finagled. A tomato out of you <laughs> and honestly if I lived here I would straight be trying to jack your stuff so tell me how you actually make money in an urban garden that has no lock and no key like right, right. how did you create the kind of community where folks aren't like just coming up in here and shopping <laughs> well I mean I, the, you know my approach is a couple of things one is um, if you put a fence up mm -hmm. then people are gonna believe that there's something Absolutely. someplace that they're not welcome. They're not welcome, that they're not supposed to be, and mm -hmm. there's something in here that I can mess up and really upset somebody. Sure. If that's your thing, if you're into that kind of thing. Sure, there's a lot sure. of people into that. Into that. Right. Um, that's one piece. The second piece is to grow a lot mm -hmm. of whatever it is I need that, mm -hmm. that I'm trying to take to market. Mm -hmm. If somebody else sees it and they're, and they're taking food, mm -hmm. then I don't really consider that stealing because, right. you know, they're it's taking it. Yeah, they're it's taking it because they want to, you know, they want to eat. The other piece is, is to really be a good neighbor, you yeah. know. And so, I mean... You know, I have real strong relationships with everybody that lives around here. Um, I give them lots of food, um, you know, you know, whatever extra got going on. Any, whenever we have a honey harvest, everybody gets a jar of honey on their, on their front porch. Oh, so you got to live over here. I got to move. <laughs> I got to move. I need so, to get my honey. <laughs> so, you know, so, so we do all that. And so, um, uh -huh. like, my neighbors over here across the street, uh -huh. they, they, um, they keep good eye on it, you know. Nice. I mean, we only lost uh, four peaches off this tree, and this is the first first uh, harvest will we'll have gotten off this tree. So that's kind of... That's awesome. That's pretty good. Um, I'm fitting to get one of those, by the way. Yeah, right. And the only, the only thing that's been actually stolen, sto I mean, if I could consider it stolen, 
were some uh, some huge Hubbard squash that hadn't gotten any color on them that, uh -huh. yet that I think somebody thought were watermelons. Oh. Okay. And so they weren't even right. No commentary. <laughs> right. <All> right. <laughs> I think that's what I think, because otherwise okay. I can't see why. Right. Otherwise, why they would take right, it. Right. 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 Um, but the whole notion for you is, it is an open space. Yeah. We are making use of the land. The land was in the community, mm -hmm. and folks know what you're doing, so they feel like they're a mm -hmm. part of your success. But they also feel like they're a part of it as well because of right. the reciprocity that you get. Right. 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 So that that's a major part of the model that makes it work. Right. How long have you had the farm in this location? Um, this now is our fourth season working at it mm -hmm. um, in terms of selling food commercially. Now it's been like, it's been, this is our second season doing that. So, um, so we sell to several restaurants and we go to, and some, some of the produce goes to uh, some retail markets. So Milk and Honey Market and then uh, the Baltimore Food Co-op mm -hmm. buys from us sometimes too. But a lot, you know, a lot of it goes to restaurants. Okay. So, so name some of the restaurants so people can know where they're getting some five seeds goodness. <laughs> right, right. So uh, Woodbury Kitchen uh, is, yeah, uh, you know, is, is a you know great partner of ours, uh -huh. and they they buy a ton of produce. As a matter of fact, right now the basil is uh, on the menu in the ice cream. Wait a minute. Woodbury Kitchen has basil ice cream. Yeah, yeah. Five Seeds Farm basil ice cream. We'll be there. Okay. So we can, we can go over there and uh, sit down for dessert. Yes. <laughs> and then um, uh, Iggy's Pizza buys a lot of basil awesome. from us. Okay. Um, and tomatoes, the San Marzano tomatoes here. Okay. They um they uh they put them on a um ani pasto plate. Uh, that sounds good. And then um you know we sell the Clementine mm -hmm. every every now and again. Um, who else? Uh, soups on in oh, Hamden. Okay. Oh, yeah. She, you know, she's a, she's a great, a great client of ours. Uh, the Baltimore Burger Bar, okay. also in Hamden. Um, where else? That sounds like a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for the for a plot this yeah. size, that sounds like you're you're yeah. really reaching. And so you're connected with an incredible uh, network of local food folks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, that's a lot. That's a lot of work. That's a whole other piece is mm -hmm. going out, mm -hmm. shopping your produce around, saying, you know, giving samples and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um. You know, but it's it's worthwhile. You know, and it's a part of part of farming. Chefs are really difficult people to work with. Right, and they want what they want, and it has to be of a certain quality. Yeah, exactly. So, so I think I have some advantage because I have some experience there. Your full time gig is food educator. Food educator in the Baltimore City Public School System. Awesome, that's super important. So. Mm -hmm. One of the great things I love about you is that, you know, you have five kids and so this becomes a part of their daily round and this right, is their right. expectation. But as a food educator in the Baltimore City Public School System, are you finding that the kids are open to this or are they still a little sketchy because they're used to their chicken boxes and their half and half and their little huggies <laughs> right, and their, right. you know, whatever drinks that they're drinking? Right. Well, I mean, I, f I feel like that I'm in a really, really particularly influential position mm -hmm. because my program um, w dictates that we make a meal for the for the kids oh. so so the kids buy prepare the meal and then they serve it to their peers and so there's a lot of that peer to peer so i get to stand stay out of it mm -hmm. and the kids can say to another kid that i i cooked this mm -hmm. i made this and so they have buy-in and they can sell it much better than i can right but at the same time you know all the kids are learning how to cook they're learning what's in season they're learning what nutrients are and what what foods mm -hmm. um you know they're getting basic culinary skills so all of that stuff so that's just like all added value but at the end of the day they're getting a meal um, we're all supporting local agriculture and you know the kids are getting a holistic education about the Baltimore food system what should the people of Baltimore know about urban farming how can you get them kind of more excited about urban farming not just supporting five seeds farms right. and the other great urban farms that we have but also encouraging them to do farms on their patios farms mm -hmm. in their yards I mean, you know, for the novice or for the person who thinks that they don't have a green thumb, right. what what would be some advice you would give to those folks? Um, just to get started. Right. I mean, that's you know, that's the first step is just to just to do something. You know, you you can very easily grow some herbs. Mm -hmm. um, you can very easily grow, you know, a tomato plant or two, um, and that's going to produce a lot of food. And you know, and then the next thing, obviously, is don't be afraid to ask questions. Yeah, ask the elders. Yeah, I don't, I'm not an elder by no, by no means, but but <laughs> ask the elders, yeah, but ask the elders for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, and just you know, really just be open to change or be open to some new experiences. I think a lot of a lot of what keeps people from growing growing food is because they think they like these certain things, right. and they don't really know about they anything else. It, right. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you know, 
you know, we're, we're in a very, very peculiar position because we're so used to eating things that don't grow around here. And so that's a whole nother experience in, you know, how you eat is being dedicated to what's grown here and, and, and buying food that's in season from people that you can go and talk to. Absolutely. And they can educate you about what you're eating and the yeah. impact that it's having on your body and wellness exactly. and all of those things. Yeah. And you got to be willing to give some things up. Like yeah. there's no, no strawberries in December. Right. Got it. Mm -hmm. We can give that up. All right. Because right. there's nothing like a fresh strawberry. There's not. There's <laughs> not. There's not. And, you know, when strawberry comes, season comes, you eat as many as you can, you freeze mm -hmm. as many as you can, you preserve the rest. And by that time, you're probably sick of strawberries anyways. That's true. You know, but then when it's time, you can go back into the freezer. Right. You know, or, you know, cantaloupe. I mean, it's, you know, it's cantaloupe is just now coming. Yeah. So you can't and have they cantaloupe. Are spectacular. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're good this season. Yeah, they're, they're very good. good. They're very good. With, with all that you've experienced in coming to Baltimore, becoming a food educator in a Baltimore City public school system, moving your, your kids here, moving your family mm -hmm. here, what has been sort of like the great takeaway about why you chose Baltimore and why Baltimore was like a really good move for you? Um, Baltimore was ready for some some changes in its uh, in its uh, food culture in its food system, and I think you know I just ended up in this really strange position where I was like kind of you know just in the in the front of the pack. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that happened um, because I did not move here with that intention. Right. I mean, I, you know, I moved here with the intention of educating my kids about food, eating more locally. Um, showing my children how to forage, um, raising chickens and bees in my own backyard. You got chickens in your backyard? I had chickens in my backyard. The raccoon did me in. Chickens in northeast Baltimore, y'all. <laughs> so so I, I went in with the intention of doing all of that. Um, there was a, a part of me that wanted to farm, wanted to be a commercial farmer. I think at some, some juncture I had kind of given up on it. Um, and you know, you know, the way the universe works, it just kind of came back, and I just kind of, kind of got pushed forward. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so that's been fantastic. And you know, there's so there's a lot of stuff here that's kind of out of my control right. that I'm just trying to, you know, just ride the wave on. I mean, you know, I, I do my best to con control this, mm -hmm. you know, and um, decide when I'm going to plant stuff, where, where it's going to go, you know, and and educate and feed feed my children and other children I come in contact with. But a lot of other stuff is kind of happening behind the scenes and I don't have any control over that. And it's, it's all been great. So how can people get involved if they want to come in and learn about farming? I know mm -hmm. one of my friends, uh, Valerie Steiner, is yeah, one of your yeah. interns and she right. posts wonderful things on Facebook about what you guys <laughs> right, are doing. Right. Like, I need to get over there and get some of that. But right. so do you have opportunities for people to kind of come Yeah, yeah absolutely. So people can come and volunteer at any time they want. You know, I, we have a website, telephone number, Facebook, okay. all that you can contact um, to come out and work. Um, so, you know, one of the things is, really difficult for me is that most people are really um, interested in working on farms and they have this notion that, you know, it, I don't know, I guess it pays really well. And it does, um, you know. It, and grub. And, yeah, and grub <laughs> and in money if you, if you do it right. But, right. you know, we're still trying to figure out how to make that happen. How to monetize it. In a, mm -hmm. in a, in a small scale, very intensive urban setting, right. city setting. Right. Um, so the people are welcome to come on the weekends. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I can work out some other details with okay. them. Um, you know, there's lots of other opportunities where folks and other farms that people can sure. work on in the city mm -hmm. that are, you know, strong partners of ours. Right. If people are really, really interested in learning how to farm, you know, I, you know, I definitely advise them to, uh, to join Future Harvest CASA, which okay. is the Chesapeake um, Alliance for Sustainable Ag Agriculture, okay. and the Pennsylvania Alliance for Sustainable Agriculture. Um, there's a new farmer training program, which I'm actually in now. Mm -hmm. Well, I want a peach. And I want a little baby tomato, and we're gonna walk through and see the space, but I, I have to thank you and the other urban farmers in the mm -hmm. area for reigniting our desire to eat locally mm -hmm. and to really think about the beauty and the bounty of our own land and our own right. space, because I think people thought about it in their own backyards, and they're like, well, this is kind of my stuff, but we weren't doing it on a larger scale. Right, so right, right. we're grateful that you came here and you had this vision, mm -hmm. and we're grateful that you amplified Baltimore in this way, and now we're going to amplify my tummy with some food. <laughs>
I'm about to taste it. Can I taste this now? You can taste okay. it. Okay. <laughs> that was absolutely worth the bad camera shot. <laughs> that is so... I can't believe I'm eating a peach that was raised in the neighborhood right where here. I was raised. Right here. In I'm doing another one. I don't care. Nothing sprayed on it. And you know what? It tastes totally different than what you get at the market. Mm -hmm. Because you're right. You can't, there's no, nothing. That's all peach. No pesticides, no craziness. Just Northeast Baltimore, yummy, tasty. And juicy on a hot summer day, goodness. That is awesome. Thank you so much, my brother. You're welcome. This is good stuff. I hope you are now inspired to shop at farmer's markets and start your own urban farm. Remember, we the people of Baltimore possess all we need to make our city thrive. With every thought, word, and action, each of us has the power to create the city we want. With this power, I hope you will always choose to amplify Baltimore. Oh. Mm -hmm.